once again from shortmeeting.com with my daily recap. Today's Monday. So happy Monday. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Do me a solid thumbs up, comment in the comment section. Uh, we're back at it again here on Monday. Hopefully you enjoyed your weekend. And this is day... I don't know. Uh, we're approaching, I want to say, uh, close to 60 days of being in quarantine, right? About two months. A lot of uh, reflection and a lot of uh, book reading going on. Um, it's so interesting. Uh, I read, uh, for the very first time, at least with a level of attentiveness, uh, The Great Gatsby the other day. And it was such an amazing book. Um, it's no wonder that they uh, recommend these types of books uh, when you're in school. Obviously, when I was in either middle school or high school, I'm pretty sure I could care less about these types of books but was so thoroughly bored the other day that I uh was Netflixed out uh charts stop charts out and I just uh grabbed the book and finished in about two days so um definitely being that the book is uh hundreds of years old not hundreds uh it's 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 up there uh you can definitely uh get it uh for free uh but I'm planning on ordering one as well because it is a good read and I would like to have it in my collection anyway Sidebar, but let's uh, jump into a recap of the overall markets. We're going to start out with the uh, SPY S&P 500, the daily chart. We're just going to focus in, obviously, on price action since we had this collapse here. Uh, we closed at 287.10 today. And this shaded area, essentially, uh, it's what I identified as resistance. I gave it a range 280 to 285. I said if we actually break out of that range, right, that's resistance. If we can't break out of it, more than likely we're going to take that next leg down. If we can break out of it, which we're kind of doing here, I can see us um, at minimum uh, hitting resistance of around 300, maybe getting a little bit over there or a little bit above that. Interestingly enough, uh, CNBC, again, I like to watch. I'm not necessarily because I follow their trades, but sometimes they have uh, really good commentators on and investors on. Um, Carl Icahn, obviously, Ackman, uh, despite some folks' reservations about him. Chamath uh, Palihapitiya, who I find to be an extraordinary in uh, intellectual person, intelligent person. Uh, and today, they actually had uh, Jeffrey Gundlach on. And uh, interestingly enough, he was um, very transparent in saying that he feels, and we all know, I think to an extent we all know that what's going on in the stock market uh, is not a reflection of what's going on in the ma main street, right? There's a complete disconnect. It is quite divorced. Uh, the stock market at Wall Street is quite divorced from what's going on on main street. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I had to reconcile with that within myself uh, to be able to put on long positions. So I knew that, well, um, uh, fundamentally, uh, things were damaged and broken, and I didn't see that in the chart. And so initially when this crash happened, uh, I was short. I was hesitant to take a long position. But then when I saw things sort of uh, shaping up a bit, I said, well, I need to look for some longs because it looks like the market is um, trending up. And obviously, I don't want to uh, miss out on that if I can enter trades safely. Anyway, back to Jeffrey. Um, he uh, disclosed, and I have a lot of respect for him. And so if if you're not familiar with him, I would definitely like Google, watch a few YouTube clips. Um, he definitely uh, indicated that he uh, in turn was short the spy uh, because he believed that we were uh, too overvalued up here. Obviously, we all know that, uh, but we were too overvalued up here. And I think he is shorter right around this range here, um, obviously, because it is representative of resistance. So I'm glad he sees that it's resistance as well as I see it being resistance. Um, and he does not think uh, unlike myself, uh, he does not think uh, that the markets can even get to that 300 level, although he entertained it is a possibility anything's possible. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I agree with him. If I was to go short, this would have been a, a decent area because it is resistance. Um, however, we're actually breaking out here uh, uh, at 287.10. And for me, if we can actually sustain that move, again, albeit on declining volume, and if we can sustain that move, I could see us actually being propelled uh, to that 300 level. But crucial, crucial. I mean, again, we're, we're peaking out here at 287, but we can easily retreat back. Uh, this is a major earnings week, uh, week. We have stocks like Twitter, I believe, Amazon, perhaps even Facebook. So we have some Apple. I think we have some real heavy hitters uh, this week, and I think that really can change the trajectory uh, of the market here, whether or not we continue to rally or if we take a next leg down. And I want to note that he does believe, Jeffrey that is, right, I call him Jeffrey like I know him, uh, but he does believe that 
uh, we have that real possibility of testing March's low, which comes in at around uh, 218. Uh, and for those that did not do the math, I did the math, and that's about a 25% decline from current levels. So he sees the market uh, going down about 25%. He trades billions. I do not. Um, and so if you uh, uh, believe in what he's saying, then perhaps a short position might be in order. What else? All right, so let's uh, really quickly, IWM, leader on the day today when, I didn't even see, what was the SPY? Let me check. Anyway, I think I have an idea. So the other indexes like the SPY, the Dow, uh, the NASDAQ, I think they were up uh, about north of 2%, a little over 1% on the day where the small cap, the Russell, right, was the leader. Uh, here we closed uh, at 127.24, representative of about 3.95% increase on the day. At one point, we were up about 4% uh, on the day. So small cap, definitely uh, a runner or it's running today. It's moving great. Uh, we closed at 127.24. Uh, and if you go back and you listen to the videos that I've done, let's say last week or um, the weeks prior, I would say mainly last week and maybe two weeks ago. I think that's when the uh, 120 area, uh, well, we can we can look at it right now, around April 9th, right? Somewhere around here. That's when that 120 uh, area of resistance became in focus to me. And I said, well, if we can pass that, chances are you're going to get a bit of a run or a rally. So we saw that move today, right? We kind of, uh, today's low, well, today's low clocked in at 123, but last week we kind of closed at 122.41. Uh, the low on Friday was 120.09. So we got the setup on Friday, and then today we had that follow-through, right, with about a 4% move to the upside. We closed at 127.24 um, with a high of 128.44. So we're starting to leave, in my opinion, um, uh, how, do, how do the expression go? I always get messed up with these expressions. I think the train is starting to leave the station, and if this can continue, um, I would not be surprised. I know it's, it's, a, it's about a 13-point move from where we are right now, but I would not be surprised if... If things go relatively well, uh, the IWM on Friday uh, being around uh, 140.99, or at least in the in the high 130s, high 140. Not let me say exactly 140.99. That's silly. But in the high 30s, um, low 40s, uh, I can see that happening by Friday, barring nothing insane. All right, so we're already leaving the station. What else? All right, so let's uh, follow up with Groupon. So remember, um, while, and it's again, I had to reconcile this with myself, um, jumping in and taking long positions, knowing what I know as to what's going on on Main Street. Uh, but again, I'm just paying attention to the technicals, following the charts, and um, if a long trade presents itself, then definitely trying to capitalize off of that. And so again, full disclaimer, full disclosure, uh, Groupon to go GRPN, uh, daily chart. We actually, uh, are currently long this stock in the premium member community and we've been it for a bit, um, because we're really looking, uh, for the stock to really give us, ex in my opinion, extraordinary gains. I'm not looking for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%. We've already made that. I'm actually looking for more than that. Uh, and so, again, I've talked about Groupon. I believe I've been talking about it since it was around one. And the message became a bit more, um, I guess it became a bit more loud uh, with me saying that if we can sustain a break above that $1 mark, I can see this stock running. And so we saw that somewhat today with it being up about 11%. Uh, we closed at 124 we're up a little bit in after hours, uh, about uh, 127. So not much in after hours, but we're up a little bit. If this can continue, right, if uh, the rally that we experienced in small caps today continue, um, if the rally that we experienced in Groupon today continues, I can really see this getting to at minimum around that 150 mark. So it's still about 25 cents of upside here. Uh, but for me, I can really see us back testing uh, resistance, which is around uh, $2. And obviously, if we can uh, overcome that than three. Not there yet. Obviously, I'm over here talking about three when we're sitting here at 124, but I'm just kind of like showing you how my mind, uh, you know, goes out. So 
I said if we can get to a dollar, we're gonna run. Right now we're at a 124, 127 and after hours. Uh, if this continues, I can see the next stop being 150. And once we get there, two dollars is not out the cards. All right. So still watch Groupon. Um, I'm not I'm advocating that you jump in now or chase or trade it at all. Obviously, it's your money. You do as you please. Uh, I'm just seeing um a relatively bullish setup here. What else? All right, so let's cap it with ticker YT, and I did uh, three, and now this is number four. I was going to do more, but I guess I'll save it for the rest of the week. Maybe I'll have a good trade set up for everyone. Um, so anyway, ticker YTEN, we're going to focus in on the hourly chart here. We closed at 786. The stock is up beautifully on the day, right? Uh, over 53%. 53% in one day is like nothing short of amazing. Um, and initially, I was going to say, well, if we break uh, this level here, which is indicative of support, you can see it here. I was going to say if we break support, then more than likely expect um, a sell off. And then I checked and we actually broke that in after hours. And so the stock is trading down about 10 percent to 705. So right now in after hours, we're about here. Um, and so that's actually critical and crucial, in my opinion, uh, heading into tomorrow if you're long or even if you're short or looking to get long or looking to get short. Um, it has to hold. Uh, if it doesn't hold, and a good gauge would be what's going on in pre-market. So after hours, we're down 10%. Look to see what it's doing in um, pre-market. So if pre-market, it's also selling off, chances are it's going to open up down. Uh, so again, tomorrow, uh, it really needs to hold. So, I mean, it, it should have held the closing price of 786. That was, for me, that was the deal break. It didn't do that. We're at 710 now or 705, somewhere around there. Um, and so heading into tomorrow, if we break that, uh, then I can see this tumbling. Uh, there's a gap here of around uh, 527 to be filled. Uh, so make note of that. So if we break 710, um, I think we'll be on, on our way to filling that gap. So if you're long, just be cautious. So we're going to cap it there. Tina here once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of that video, I'd like for you to do three things for me. One, comment in the comment section. Again, I've been talking about Groupon a lot. What are your thoughts? Do you, do you see it getting to two? Uh, what about the SPY, the IWM? Um, I've said a couple of things. I initially was bearish and and now, uh, based on uh, the charts, it looks like things might be uh, formulating to a more bullish side. Uh, then you had Jeffrey Gonlock, and he's um, he short the market. Uh, how are you positioned in the market? Again, comment in the comment section. That's one. Two, I do videos daily to ensure that you don't miss any. Uh, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel at Short Me Tina. And lastly, uh, right now what we're doing on our website is we're hosting a free 14-day trading course. It's uh, delivered over the course of 14 days, essentially detailing a lot of the things that I've learned trading the stock market for the past uh, north of 20 years. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely head on over to our website, shortmetina.com. Sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening, and as always, thank you for the support. Uh, enjoy your Monday, stay safe, and I'll talk to you back here tomorrow.